Hello, my name's Kyle. I'm currently in Brisbane, Australia, which is on the east coast north of Sydney, and this is The Great Escape. Alright, so this is my hostel here at uh, Nomads, and this bed right here is uh, my roommate Daniel. Uh, he's from Denmark. He's staying here. He's working with the Red Cross. This is my bed up here. No idea about down there or who's going to stay in there tonight. But as you can see, it's not that great of a view of the city. You kind of just get to see walls. But that being said, it's only $14 uh, Australian a night here, which I think works out to $15 or $16 US. So it is pretty reasonably priced for everything that you get. There's showers. There's a kitchen downstairs that's communal. Uh, they have Wi-Fi here. They have group activities. So if things work out, I'm going to go with uh, Daniel who sleeps in that bed um, tonight with him and his uh, friend to go walk around the city. And if not, I'll just go explore on my own. All right, this is the view of the roof. It's the uh, fifth floor. But as you can see, it's uh, relatively busy. It's right downtown, so I'm going to go start exploring for the day. But right over there is Central Station, so if you arrive in the airport, take the train down to here, and it's right across the street. It's really easy to get to, and it's right in a convenient downtown location. The Aborigines have been living in Brisbane for an estimated 22,000 years. However, around 1800 is when the West started colonizing or adapting Brisbane. It was named after Sir Thomas Brisbane, who was the first governor of, I believe it's Queensland, uh, or South New Wales, whichever one was the first of the uh, two uh, provinces to be built. That being said, uh, Brisbane's main export in total is going to be generic trade, which has, in 2018, $16.1 billion worth of exports. However, if you were to take a single segment slice, it would then be tourism as the biggest export that they have, which was not included in that $16.1 billion, which is about $7 billion worth of uh, sales a year. Okay, so this is walking downtown Brisbane. Uh, I'll show you some of the different shops that we have along the way, uh, but most of the stuff seems to be kind of expensive. I'll get a shot of it, but back up there towards the hostel was the split barber shop and tattoo shop. So, Nick, if you're watching, I think someone actually beat you to uh, the idea. But there is a lot of uh, public works of art here in this town along with it. There is not that much of a... Uh, homeless population a lot of other big cities I've visited it seemed to be rampant and overwhelming but here it seems a little bit more contained along with it if you saw the person about a minute or two ago uh, they were riding lime scooters uh, I don't know the exact amount it costs but when I was in Raleigh North Carolina for Halloween last year they have bird scooters which are the same basic concept where you pay I think it's like a dollar for the first minute and then like 50 cents for every additional minute and you get to ride the scooter around and it's electric so it goes probably like 15 to 20 miles an hour and those things pick up and go really fast so if you venture north from center city uh, you're going to come to this which is a more residential neighborhood it's a lot quieter there's not as many people here you don't have the restaurants but you can see a lot of the influence from the 1800s when the buildings were built. Now in the uh, 19, I believe it was 77, and then 2010, 2011, uh, they had experienced floods here in Brisbane because it's right along the, uh, I can't think of the name of the river, but the river is known to flood and what it's ended up happening is as this town has expanded because there's been more pressure for people to come here uh, it's ended up moving further and further into the flood zone so every time it floods it ends up destroying more and more houses which on one hand is unfortunate because you know there's just so much here but on the other hand the nice thing is, because there was flooding and all of these different changes to the town historically, it made it a lot easier to have the upgrade uh, from outhouses to toilets here in Australia. Um, but at the same time, it does cost a lot of money on the economy to consistently have to rebuild uh, this town. This is the city hall. Now, most parts of Australia have town halls. This is considered a city hall. And up here, this... Uh, statue scene 
was made by Daphne Mayo, uh, who had done a number of different works of art across Brisbane. Now this right up here depicts a saint and a bunch of European people coming in, killing the aboriginals and all of the animals and creating society. And at the very like edge of the town is the botanical garden, so here's the sign for it. I'll give you a walk through as we continue. Uh, but it's got this nice big lagoon here, and then they have other things around this area that you should be able to look at uh, that are free. So this is all um, public land. So as we venture on a bit more, we actually do come into the part of the botanical gardens where you can see all of this lush, subtropical, sub-rainforest plants over here. Uh, this town has virtually no humidity to it, so right now it's 75 degrees sunny and the warmth is just radiating right into you. Um, there's huge, huge spaces in here with lots of different trees. They have playgrounds for children. They have spots for you to put your sailboat over in the river. And then they also have just common grounds. There were a couple people playing guitar that I had saw as I passed by. As one of the different bits of the art that's been put here in the public domain, is the statue here. It's called the Building Blocks of Life and it was donated in 1988. Uh, I don't have any information to run on this statue, however, from the designs, I am assuming that it's probably inspired by the Aborigine art. This right here is a mangrove, or a mangrove, depending on how you pronounce it. And mangroves are what sit right on the coastline right here, and they have a primar primarily high amount of silt in the dirt. Uh, the Aborigines here in Australia used to use the mangroves to make canoes, paddles, food, but it actually turns out that they're incredibly useful as plants because they help with climate change because this is directly what sits right on the salty water, so it helps mitigate the uh, amount of runoff that you get going into the river. So in the 1970s, the town of Brisbane... Uh, I guess city actually had started doing restoration projects to help keep these around because they are one of the biggest uh, assets in mitigating climate change that the city has on a natural and botanical level.